Welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and we're going to be looking at some standard enthalpy changes. In terms of where this sits on the specification then, it's a learning aim A3 and we're going to be looking at this section down the bottom here where it says no definitions of a range of standard enthalpy changes related to the reactions in A1 and A2. So our outcomes for this video are to recall definitions for those three standard changes. We can look at the standard enthalpy of formation, the standard enthalpy of combustion, the standard enthalpy of hydration. And what we need to do is to be able to construct equations for any of those standard enthalpy changes, including the state symbols. And then what we're going to do is going to interpret the magnitude of these enthalpy changes and the sign of the enthalpy changes and compare them to literature values. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated and please take advantage of the like and comment features. And let me know what we think. So now we're going to look at some specific enthalpy changes. First off, we're going to start with the enthalpy of combustion. Now the definition for this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance completely reacts with oxygen under standard conditions. Now let me address the standard conditions bit first. We know it's under standard conditions because of this symbol here. And standard conditions are 298 kelvins, that's the temperature. It's 101 kilopascals of pressure. And any solutions would be in one moles per decimeter cubed. Those are our standard conditions. Now back to the definition. It says the, the key points are when one mole of a substance completely reacts with oxygen. So let's look at some examples then because we need to recognize equations that accompany these enthalpy changes. So first of all, methane. Methane is a gas. It's going to be reacting with oxygen. It will burn completely to form carbon dioxide, gas, and water. Hydrocarbons burn to form carbon dioxide and water, and that's complete combustion. But we need to balance the equation. But when I balance the equation, I must make sure that this methane remains a one because it has to be when one mole of a substance completely reacts. Two here and two here. That balances the equation. The second equation, carbon reacting with oxygen. Now carbon is graphite, it's a solid. Reacting with oxygen, which is a gas, and it has to be complete combustion. So this is going to be carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide. And that equation is balanced. Metals will also react with oxygen. Sodium is a metal, it's a solid. It will react with oxygen to make sodium oxide. Now sodium is in group one. So that's one plus. And oxide is in group six, so that will be two minus. The charge on a sodium is plus one. The charge on an oxide is two minus. Therefore, the ionic formula will be Na2O, and that will be an ionic lattice solid. Now, balancing this is fairly tricky because I've got to make sure that this remains a number one at the front. It's tempting to put a two there to balance the equation, but I can't because as soon as I put a two, it's no longer one mole of a substance, it's two moles. So I must leave that alone. So I'm going to put a half here because a half Na2 is one. So that's one Na. It means I've only got half an oxygen. So this is really awkward. I need to put a quarter in front of the O2 because a quarter times two is a half, which matches my half oxygen here. Finally then, the last one is ethanol. Now, ethanol is a liquid. It will also react with oxygen and the complete combustion will make 
carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and water, which is a liquid. Now balancing this, I need to put a two, a three, and then balancing the oxygens, I've got four oxygens here, I've got three oxygens here, so that equals seven oxygens on the right. Be careful because there's already an oxygen there, so I need six here, so three or two. And that equation represents the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol. Now what I will point out at this point is that enthalpy of combustion is always exothermic always going to be exothermic so delta h will always be a negative value so the next enthalpy change is going to be enthalpy of formation and that's delta h f again we can see that it's under standard conditions so what's the definition it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Key point here again, it's when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in their standard states. So let's have a look at some equations. So if I'm going to do the enthalpy of formation of CH4, I must make sure that CH4 is the product because I'm forming it. And I'm going to form it from its elements. The elements here would be carbon graphite and hydrogen gas. That's the elemental form of carbon and hydrogen. Now I need to balance it and this time when I balance it I need to ensure that this remains a one. So I need to form one mole so when I'm balancing I can't change the moles on the right hand side. Balanced. Following the same idea then I'm going to form one mole of carbon dioxide for the second one and that will be formed from carbon and from oxygen it's a very easy one to balance already balanced the third one slightly more difficult I'm going to form one mole of NaCl that's an ionic lattice it will be a solid it will be formed from its elements which is sodium metal and chlorine is a halogen, it's a diatomic gas, it's a pale green gas. Now, again, when I'm balancing this, it's tempting to put a two on the right, but I can't do that. I need to put a half in front of the Cl2 so that you only have one Cl on the left and right. And the third and final one, I'm forming one mole of ethanol. So ethanol becomes the product, it's a liquid. It's going to be formed from two carbon graphites, three H2, that gives me the six hydrogens I need, and that's a gas, and it's going to be half or two gas. So they must all be elements on the left, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, being careful that the gases are diatomic, hydrogen and oxygen, and then balancing, I must ensure that I don't change this number. So that remains a number one. Third and final enthalpy change then, the enthalpy change of hydration. And given the notation delta H, HYD hydration. And the definition here is the enthalpy change when one mole of aqueous ions are formed from one mole of gaseous ions. What you're basically doing here is taking gaseous ions and surrounding them with water. You're forming bonds with water. So again, it's worth pointing out here that the enthalpy change will always be a negative value. It's always going to be exothermic, just like it was for combustion. That's always exothermic. The previous one on formation can be exo, can be endo. Right, let's look at some examples then. We'll look at chloride, sodium, and strontium. So chloride is Cl minus. So all we really need to do here is change the state symbol. We're going to go from gaseous to aqueous. That's the first one done. Sodium, being careful that we know the charge. Sodium's in group one, so it will only be one plus. There we go for sodium. 
Strontium, be careful, it's in group two. It's two plus, remember you do have a periodic table in the exam. So from strontium two plus gas to strontium two plus aqueous. You are simply surrounding it with water, okay? Chance for you to have a go here then. So I suggest you pause the video and you have a go at constructing equations for these six enthalpy changes. I've added something extra in the bottom box where I've asked you to try and predict which one is the most exothermic. Now to give you a clue before you start that, the stronger the bond, the more exothermic it's going to be. When you're ready, unpause the video to see the answers. First one, magnesium solid with oxygen, because this is combustion. This will form MgO solid balance. I need half O2. C2H6 gas reacting with oxygen gas. Complete combustion would form 2CO2 and 3H2O. The balance, we need a three and a half or two, so fractions are needed here. Next one, formation. I'm going to form one mole of Na2O. I'm going to need two sodium metals and half O2 gas. The second one is tricky. I'm going to form calcium hydroxide. From one mole of calcium, which is a metal, it's going to be solid. I'm going to need one mole of O2 gas because I've got two oxygen atoms on the right and one mole of hydrogen, H2 gas. That's complete. Finally, the hydration. Magnesium is in group two. It will be two plus. So it's going to go from magnesium two plus gaseous to magnesium two plus aqueous. And calcium, group two also, calcium two plus gaseous to calcium two plus aqueous. But I did add an extra element here asking you to predict which one would have the stronger bonds. In other words, would be the most exothermic change. So in other, will water form stronger bonds with magnesium or stronger bonds with calcium? Now, the first thing I would look for is the charge, because the bigger the charge, the stronger the bond. But they both have the same charge, so that doesn't really help me. Then I'm going to look at the radius of the ion. Now, if I look at magnesium and calcium in the periodic table, calcium is below magnesium, so will be a bigger radius. So magnesium 2 plus will be smaller in radius than calcium 2 plus. That means that the smaller the radius, the charge is more dense. We've got the same ionic charge of two plus, but magnesium is a smaller radius, so it's more dense. The charge density is greater. This means it will be more attractive to water. So the hydration for magnesium will be more exothermic than the hydration for calcium. So the final two things we need to look at then are magnitude and sine of delta H and then comparisons to literature values. Let's start with the sine. Now the sine of delta H identifies the reaction as exothermic or endothermic. So it tells us which way the energy is moving. Negative delta H means it's exothermic because energy is being released from the system to the surroundings. A positive enthalpy change is the opposite. It means it's endothermic. Energy is moving from the surroundings into the chemical system. The magnitude of the sign, or the sorry, the magnitude of the value, the bigger the value, is more energy is being transferred per mole. So a bigger enthalpy change means there's a larger amount of energy being transferred per mole. So a large exothermic would release a lot of energy to the surroundings and increase the temperature more than something that is of a smaller magnitude. So the size of the value is the amount of energy being transferred. 
So finally, let's have a look at literature values then and what we mean by this. So when we use the term literature value, these are the values for enthalpy changes that you would find in shared databases, in textbooks and in journals. And they will have been carried out under standard conditions, which is 298 kelvins, 100,000 pascals and per mole of substance. The truth is, though, if you were to carry out those in a lab, it's highly unlikely that you would have managed to maintain standard conditions. For example, if you were to burn methane, under standard conditions, water is a liquid. So you can see the product there is a liquid. However, if you were to actually burn methane in a lab, you are likely to produce water vapour, which is H2O gas. And therefore, your conditions are not the same as the ones quoted in the book. Secondly, if you were to try and do a reaction such as the formation of methane, this second reaction here, if you were to take carbon and hydrogen, the chances are that you wouldn't just make methane, you would actually make a mixture of products here. Okay, and that's even if you manage to do it in the absence of air, because again, the chances are that you would end up with some oxygen in there too. So that reaction is very, very difficult for you to carry out in a lab. And that's the end of this video then. So again, please subscribe. Your support is appreciated and good luck.